Hello and welcome, and today's date is that of Sunday, the 7th day of June 2020. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at Theta, uh, talk more about why I think it's going to go down a little bit. We got the target in at around uh, a break below 1900, I think. I haven't even looked at the gold and silver market. It has opened an hour ago. I'll take a look at that for the first time. And I've made, you call it a sports wager? It's on video games, League of Legends. I think there is tremendous value. I don't know if I'm trying, if they're trying to trap me or not, but I'll show you the information that I'm looking at and uh, making a 0 0.1 Bitcoin cash size wager, the equivalency of 25 US dollars. All right, all bets, trades, and the like within each zone risk and their own reward. And as I mentioned, it's when you look at this on the daily chart, short setup, if you will, or I think it's going to go down. I mean, I technically could sell Theta, buy it back at a cheaper price, and I'd get what I wanted of a short if I'm wrong. I'd, I'd buy it back at a higher price, pay more, or get less back, something like that. I'm not going to do that. I've been selling on the way up, and and then, of course, I'll be buying on the way down. So I'm hoping it goes down this level. No guarantee that it's going to. But as we can see, we had support uh, the day after the high at the... Uh, 38.2% Fibonacci level at around 3,000. The next day it bounced there, supporting it for another day on the 29th. It barely broke through, closing on the uh, support level on the 30th and then having a clear break the day before, the day after rather, 31st. And since then, every single day it has stayed below the 3,000 mark, resisting it the day after on June the 1st, the day after this move. Resisting it again on the June 4th and June 5th sessions, but we can see it's been breaking down from that high. Just leaving the 18 average of lows, how it's breaking down from there. To me, it looks as if this is uh, poised, uh, ready to uh, have uh, that significant break. There we can see the resistance once, twice, three times. And uh, well, since this uh, has been falling on uh, June the 5th or for the last two days, two days and a half now, it has just been continuously going lower. The last four or five periods have been going sideways. You can see probably a little bit more of that on the hourly term. Enough for the 18 average starting to uh, flatten out a little bit, but it does seem how long it takes, I don't know, that we are looking to make a move that should take us uh, down towards that level. Again, if it does or it doesn't, uh, time would only tell. Now let's take a look at gold and silver. Uh, gold, not doing anything really, 0.1. 5% to the downside, oops, whatever, let's break even. Uh, one minute chart, yeah, just doing a whole bunch of uh, noth nothing really. It did break down on Friday from the 18 average of uh, lows below that, down again another hit amongst this uh, major uh, Fibonacci level that I've uh, been talking about for quite some time. When we take a look at this on the monthly time frame, representing a 76.4% uh, uh, correction from this high uh, to this low. And it's still well, well overextended that if this thing starts to give in on the daily term, so be it. So we'll fill in maybe Fibonacci from this high to this low. Uh, checking that as silver, probably not much of a difference here. Yeah, knit down a third of a percent. And it's price action, uh, just making a correctionary move in here, has yet to come back down this 1570 level, if there's going to be any significant move. But I'm, in, I'm just accumulating this, and I have accumulated a lot in the past, and I do believe that the gold and silver, especially silver, is poised for a, pre a significant break. Now, as far as bets are concerned, I might as well show up Bitcoin Cash, because that's what I'm wagering on it as well, so... There we have its price against Bitcoin. So therefore, I'm betting the equivalency of 0 0.00259 Bitcoin, considering I'm betting 10% of this. So within this daily chart, uh, I'm doing okay, but not the greatest of jobs of supporting this. Uh, not really, not really too too much. Just really flat more than anything. But as far as the game is concerned. OMG, oh my God, taking on Victory 5, VF. And it's got a money line of minus 176 and plus 131. And it's all about the OMG is how I want to play this. Um, 
the play here that I like, and I got a worse price than this. I got plus 167, not much of a difference. Max bet is 2.3 uh, BCH, which means, uh, which isn't too, too much. That's uh, uh, 600 bucks or 650, 650 is the most bet you can bet on it. But that means on a plus 170 for every one unit that you put up or every hundred rather, you get 170. So if you put up 10 bucks, you would win uh, 17 profit. So you get back your original 10 that you put up and then another uh, 17 for that of uh, 27 back on a win. And I really do believe that this is a very easy win for them to cover this mile because the way it works out, they play two games. So another way of saying that the correct score will be exactly that of two to nothing for OMG. And I don't see how it's not going to be. Let's take a look at the standings. <laughs> So right on the top, it's Invictus Gaming, who has won 14 of 16 series and in the games, winning 28 to 11. OMG is ranked number 12. They have won 7 of 16 series with a score of 17 to 21. Well, Victory 5 hasn't had too many victories. In fact, they haven't had any victories. In fact, Victory is singular, and there was their victory right here. I suppose. And maybe they're going for five and they got four more to go. Uh, I don't... But they have five players and the five players have been accumulated one victory. These guys have played 16 games. 15 of the 16 times they've been swept two games to O. Oh. And once they lost two games to one. And this is the second meeting between OMG and Victory 5 and OMG beat them 2-0 oh last time. So why is that spread? As it is. I mean, that, that's all I got. That's all I got. I got the starting lineups. Um, these are going to be the starters that are going to play. Hacker looks pretty good. I'm not a big fan of the Curse player, but Ruby Bull is pretty good. But this uh, Cold player is really good. Icon, Smills. I mean, these are these are four good players right there. So there are four. That is what I'm doing. And I kind of think, should I make a video of this? Obviously, I did. Superstition. Well, if I make a video, maybe it's going to be one of those spots. But you know what? I've had and I've had a lot of situations where I put out picks and they've had wins and losses. And I was going to put out one last week. I kind of wish I would have in a Korean baseball game where I predicted the winning team was going to destroy them so easy. It was like a 99% chance someone was going to win, 98% chance. It was like, come on. And the final score was like 12-2 to 2 or something. I was right. But... Uh, anyway, that's what I'm looking at. This team has won one of 33 different games, and I'm betting for them to win uh, two in a row. Let's do some quick math. If we say think that there's a 70% chance that in any individual game that OMG can beat Victory 5, well, if I multiply it by itself... I get 0.49, which is pretty much 50-50. So if you were to think that there was a 70% likelihood that these guys were going to beat them in any individual game, and then on top of that, you were getting even odds to bet it, you'd be basically getting fair value. You're really uh, not making anything. And technically, you'd be getting micro loss because you'd have a 49% chance of winning. And yet you're getting odds where you need 50%. But I'm getting at plus 170, which is 2.7, I suppose. 2.7, if I one exit, is 0.37. So I need x to the power of 2. That gets me 0.37. And 6 would get me 0.36. So therefore, as long as you feel there is a 60% chance that... OMG can beat them on any given set when this team has lost 32 of 33. And these guys are pretty much a 500, but below 500 team. It really doesn't matter who Victory 5 is playing. It could be LNG for all I care or the LG, LGD, the other two bottom teams. I mean, it's a, hand, a mile, mile difference between these two squads. It, to me, is almost like the comparison of, yeah, let's put like a house league versus an all-star team. And, well, basically, when I was playing back in, as a kid, if you tried out for all-star and you didn't make the team, 
And that means you were allowed to play on the house elite team, which is another way of saying the minors or just the league below. And they, that's exactly what I see out of them, is that they look to be in the league below. So this is on cloudbet.com, which is where I personally bet at. And it's worked fine for me every single time that I win and I withdraw. Then I, uh, I get paid every single time. My balance is zero because I don't leave anything on here. If I win, then I'm going to withdraw it. And now it's even up to plus 173 now. I mean, the odds just keep getting better. So what, is there some sort of like, why is the odds moving that way? I don't understand. That's why I'm kind of wondering. Is there some sort of trap bet? But whatever. Anyway, take care.